Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today is a frankly unexpected vlog. I said in my last vlog if I had any new developments that I would, you know, <clears throat> come forward and discuss them as it relates to my big move and our plans and all that. I didn't know if that'd be three weeks from now or three days or what. Well, <clears throat> things moved up really quick. So I have a lot to say and go over. <clears throat> um, but what I thought I'd do too, and I also have get some some wonderful gifts that I just recently got that I, I have to share. I, I'm so touched by the outpouring of love and kindness from so many in this community. You guys have been like ridiculously good to me and I'm very, very appreciative. I can't tell you. I mean, it, it, the, the feelings I have of support and the um, <clears throat> camaraderie within this community, on the, on the goods part of the community, the community is... <sighs> It has, it's a pretty interesting community. There's good, goods and bad and highs and lows, but thankfully I'm attached to the, to the really good part of the community, which is, I'm very appreciative of that. That just, there's not a day that goes by that I'm just not thankful to God for how good the community is, the gaming has been, and even though I've been through the toughest challenge where I'm so limited with my gaming, just enjoying the gaming of the, my other friends and their channels has been fantastic. I've just, I've been, you know, just enjoying everyone else's videos and their pickups videos, you know, and their gaming, um, you know, videos. I don't watch the whole Twitch thing, but if they, you know, if they upload their stuff or if they're live on YouTube or they have an archive thing on, that they did on Twitch or whatever and they somehow archive it and put it on YouTube, I enjoy watching those very much. Silver Wings 21, I stayed up late the other night. I was up at like midnight or one in the morning or whatever watching. Um, he was doing a gameplay. Oh God, what was it? I've watched so many things of his. He did the Doom 64 recently, which I enjoy. Oh, he did Goldeneye. I've only seen like reviews of Goldeneye. I've never played it on the N64, but I watched hours of his Goldeneye thing. It really looks good. He had a really good picture too. The quality really looked awesome on it, the way he was capturing it. And so I asked him some questions in the stream, the live chat. It was really cool. I really enjoyed it. And I'm really getting excited about getting into the N64. I can't tell you. In fact, he gave me a lot of good tips on how to get the best picture quality. You know, i got to find another analog TV. There's no, there's really, this, <laughs> there's no two ways around it. But, um, but I, thought I, would start, I thought I'd start off with going over. I have some nice gifts. And then I did a few pickups. Steve came by the other, the other day. We had an open house all Saturday and Sunday. And I was just mentally and emotionally exhausted from having so many people. It was like overwhelming how well it did. And I'll get into that later after I, you know, go over the gifts and things. So he said, Bud, you, would you mind if I came by? And I go, oh, that'd be great. Get me out of here, please. You know, and they were just closing up and kind of wrapping up the open house. And so the timing was great. And uh, he wanted to come by. He was looking, wanted to go to some of the game stops in my area because he kind of exhausted all the ones by his house. Oh, yeah, I'll take you. I'll show you all. There's like three or four of them around here, really good ones. So that'd be fun. We'll take a little road trip and get a bite to eat later. It'd be great. <clears throat> so there's one real close to my house. The parking sucks, but if you go there, you know, in the evening, it's not too bad. So he went there. Well, little did I know they had a like, 50 to 80% off sale. They're closing the store. <clears throat> Excuse me. In fact, they're closing a couple stores here in town, which I didn't even know. So I, I was kind of, you know, it was kind of, kind of a downer to see the closest one to my house close. Of course, I'll be out of here. And it really won't matter. But still, I, I, I'm partial. I like the managers of a lot of the local game stops, and I love GameStop. I'm not one of these people that has to, you know, with the drama videos and the negativity. I'm not. This channel is not about that, and it never will be. So. It was sad. Oh, look, dude. Yeah, I know. He said, wow, I knew they had stores closing. I didn't know they, they had one so close here closing. I go, well, let's go and look. Maybe we'll find something. Well, it was pretty picked over. This was like on a Saturday evening. And uh, it was already, and, and they had like 50% off all Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and all their retro stuff. I didn't even know they had retro stuff. They had a glass cabinet with NES games, Super NES, Game Boy Advance, um, Sega Genesis, Super NES, I mean, it was fantastic. And they had a really good array of games. Uh, not, I'm not a lot of the ones that I'm into. Actually, a lot of the ones that are real popular in those systems, I'm not a real big fan of. I don't play a lot of the, I'll call, I'll call them kiddie games, but they're very well-loved games, the, the Mario games and Donkey Kong and a lot of those. And, and they are fun. I have played them from time to time. But I like a lot of the other games, you know, like, you know, Doom and Quake and... <clears throat> Cruising USA, that kind of stuff. Those are the kind of the ones I kind of 
because I was an adult when all those games came out, not a kid. So to me, I kind of gravitated towards more of those. So I said, oh, good, let's look, you know, and they were pretty picked over, you know, and Steve was specifically looking for a few things uh, that he wanted, and, and, I, and I was as well. I wasn't looking to spend money. I mean, I got enough games. It was nice just to get out of the house and to go out with my bud on a game hunt, you know, for the evening. It's like, let's go to every GameStop in town. I go, let's do it. And I'm all excited. Pop some pain pills to go for the drive and just toughed it out, you know. Really cool. We found some good stuff. Um, but before I get into that, for what I get into, I found, I want to go over my the gifts, which to me are, really takes is paramount and takes precedence because I've got some wonderful gifts, very unexpectedly. First of all, Steve had a bunch of gifts. We were supposed to go together to this Livermore. It's about an hour and a half from here, a big event, and I just couldn't do the drive. I, I just couldn't do it. And I think we had something going that weekend. Laura and I had to go. We had to do something. Or maybe I went to Idaho. I can't remember. I was gone or something happened. I couldn't go. And then Steve, I think, was sick on top of it. And I was just so, dude, we'll do it another time. What a bummer. I would have loved to have gone. Well, he went anyway. I didn't know he went. He actually felt better and ended up going to this thing. And he bought himself a bunch of games. Well, he went out of his way and picked me up a bunch of games, which was like, Steve, you, you've done so much for me. Please don't do any more. I, I feel guilty. You know? um, so he, he gave me some great games. <clears throat> he came over and he put them he over in a big bag and he lays them all out on my kitchen counter with a nice lighting on it, and I was just like, oh, dude, thank you so much. This is very thoughtful. If he had gotten me one of these games, I would have been elated, but he got me several of them. So I'll show you what he got me. Uh, he knows that I'm really hot and heavy on this N64 thing, so he got me Ridge Racer 64, which I've always wanted to play. I'll have all the Ridge Racer games for the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, and it's just nice to have... I want to start getting more games than, you know, these um, uh, N64 games that I like. I uh, like Road Rash, you know, 64 and stuff like this. So this was hot on my list. And it's like he knew what I wanted. Now, ironically, he didn't even realize it until after he looked at it that all of these, for the most part, are, are racing games. But I'm not complaining. You know, that's one of my favorite genres. And it's very easy for me to play those. He got me Rush San Francisco, another fantastic game. Now, I have... I think Rush San Francisco for the um, uh, for the PlayStation 1. Oh, wow, I've got these wild turkeys on my front yard. Wow, amazing. Scared me. I saw a reflection in there. There's this big looming thing coming. Oh, my God, what is that? It's too big for a cat. It was big. We have a bunch of wild turkeys. They roam through the neighborhood. But anyway, getting on to the games. So you got me this extreme racing San Francisco Rush. I do have this for the PlayStation 1, but everyone knows this is a superior version of it. I've watched a lot of gameplay videos. When I research games, whether it's Terminator, <clears throat> um, Terminator Resistance or Terminator Salvation or whether it's these N64 games, I never just talk, go out and talk about games not knowing about them. I will sit and watch multiple, sometimes a dozen reviews, and then I'll watch gameplay videos. Sometimes I'll even watch just a small chunk of a long play because I want to really know what I'm talking about before I just go on camera and start talking about Terminator Resistance when I don't know jack shit about it. And you, it just makes you look foolish if you don't really know what you're talking about. So I, that's one thing I've always tried to do is, you know, I know a lot about a lot of older 5th and 6th gen games, but there's a lot of games, obviously, that I've never played or don't know about. So if I do talk about them or show them in a pickups video, I do extensive study before they even make it onto my buy list. I'll watch hours sometimes of videos on them just to rule them out and go because that's something that genuinely I could see myself enjoying sometimes yes sometimes no sometimes I'll put it on a list and then the ones that I really know for sure I want ironclad I'll put a little asterisk by that way I, those and the other ones I'm kind of thinking of and sometimes I'll watch more videos on them or do some research on them but and then he um, so anyway then Steve got me Rush 2 I got my glasses on I still can't read it Extreme Racing USA Another great racing game. So I didn't even know there were two Rush games. I knew there was one, but I didn't know there were two. Um, Cruising USA is hot on my list. In fact, I just watched, um, God, what was it? Um, Silver Wings 21 did some gameplay of this, if, if I'm correct. And I just watched a few minutes. I didn't have time to sit and watch the whole live stream, but really enjoyed it. And I quickly added that to my list. I watched a few more reviews on it. I said, oh, yeah, I got to have that one. This one's called Extreme G. Looks like some kind of a kind of a jet moto hovercraft, you know, F Zero kind of a deal. Really cool racing game. Oh, the turkeys are going crazy out there. 
this one I've never heard of, but it looks good. It's a racing game and certainly welcome in my collection. In fact, I need to sit and watch some uh, gameplay videos and reviews of this. And it's called California Speed. So, kind of ironic because I'm now leaving California, but it's welcome. I love racing games, and I'm sure anything on the N64 will be quite welcome. And then to top things off, this is the only N64 game that I played for hours extensively. The only one I've ever played back in, God, it was, I don't know, the early 2000s. I'm not sure, maybe 99 to 2001 in there somewhere. My nephew came down from Northern California visiting, and he brought with him his N64. And a couple games, this, is the, this game just came out like that week. And he says, oh, Uncle Dean, you're going to love this. He knows I love Star Wars. You know, he loves it, too. He's really hooked on it. And so he got, um, Steve got me Star Wars Episode One Racer, a pod racer. Now, I have the Racer's Revenge for the PlayStation 2, plus I have a digital version on my, um, oh, shit, my screensaver. I don't want to hear. Oh, the turkeys are out there gobbling, making <laughs> noises. This is a, one of my favorite games. So now I've got Shadows of the Empire, and I have this Pod Racer game. I just have to get the other two Star Wars games to complete my Star Wars collection. But I absolutely love this. I almost bought an N64 just based off from the fun I had with this game. But then, you know, my nephew left, and life goes on. I'm still collecting for the PlayStation 1 or 2 like crazy, and it just slipped through the cracks. I, to this day, I've never got one. And now I'm just, it's like a, a console I'm ex very excited about playing. Because of my friends like, you know, Silver Wing 21 enjoying it. And, of course, <clears throat> Steve, my, my bud, has got, and Jeremy, too, love the N64 and have a lot of affinity for it. So this is a great treat. Steve, thank you so much for these. You went way overboard with the, <laughs> with the gifts. It's just, it's, he's too, too nice. I feel bad now I'm leaving Sacramento. I wish I could take him with me. I'm trying to talk him into moving out of the state and coming to Idaho. I don't know if he can. It's tough when you get it. When you have children and they have a life here in school and work and friends and girlfriends, it's, it's tough. It's hard to uproot your family. My daughter's already moved away and grown up now, almost 30 years old, down and living in Orange County. So I don't have to worry about that. We can kind of pick up and move a lot more easier. Oh, God, these turkeys are going crazy out here. Um, and then I had um, my good friend... Um, uh, my friend Vinny that lives in Twin Falls, Idaho, which I just actually talked to yesterday uh, via texting, he sent me um, a couple things. I, unfortunately, I don't have the book. He sent me a book on good heart health about how to take care of your heart, and it's from a, a, a doctor that did a really a lot of really good studies, on which I've been reading. And thank you for that book, Vinny, very much. I really appreciate it. I, unfortunately, I think I packed. I don't have it here. Uh, but I, did, I do have the game here. It was sitting on my desk, and that's Treasures of the Deep. Now, ironically, I just saw a review like three or four months ago on this, and I, or I watched a game play, a guy that was talking about his favorite PlayStation 1 games, and I had never seen this game before or in the wild, but I love the critical depth game. Anything underwater, I'm just a huge sucker for. And this, the graphics on this look good. So I sat and finished watching the guy's review, and then I just before I put it on my list, I went ahead and I watched like a whole bunch of reviews on it and gameplay videos. I go, oh yeah, I've guts to have this. Well, Vinny didn't know that. He just thought it was it's a game he liked and he thought I would like it. And just kind of a random thing, but it was this is one of the few PS1 games I actually have on my list to get. Vinny, thank you so much for this. Over the top action under the sea. Here's the back of the box. Really good stuff. Great stuff. All complete in great shape. Really happy with this. I love underwater games, and I love the PlayStation 1. This really means a lot to me, Vinny. The book and the game, thank you so much. Very, very generous of you. Uh, my good friend Fred, who I've never met, I don't know what he looks like. I wish I could interact with him. You know, Fred, if you want to send me an email, I'd love to converse with you. I wish I knew more about you. He's been very generous. He sent me a bunch of Xbox 360 games and PlayStation 3 games, including that special collector's edition of Kane and Lynch which I just absolutely cherish. That was a holy grail that I didn't even know about. That If I had known about it, I, that would have been hot on my list to get. I love that game so much. Thank you, Fred, for that. I'm still just amazed. And all the other games you sent. Well, he sent me a thing in one of my comment sections recently. Dude, you're going to still be there for a while. I have something I'd like to mail you. And I go, yeah, I'll be here for probably another three, four weeks, God willing. So I just went to my mailbox last night. And I completely forgot he was going to send this. 
he found this is one of my biggest holy grails for the Xbox 360. Uh, I'm not typically big on a lot of box sets where I've got to have you know the, the, the every variant of every game, but uh, this is one game that I really wanted and a special variant of it. I already have the game for the Xbox 360, one of my favorite exclusives for the 360. But I don't know if he, Fred, I don't know if you knew that I wanted this or not, but this means a lot to me. This is a really special gift. He gave me the Forza 2 box set. What is it called? Limited Editions? Limited Collector's Edition. Comes with a nice slip cover. Uh, got some wonderful cars in the back, some Jags and Porsches and Beamers and Mazda, you know, RX-8 and everything. Very, very cool. Um, now it's a, it's a, it's a UK game. It says it, it's at 60 hertz, and I think I thought the American version was at 50 hertz. So hopefully it'll play on my TV. I don't know, but I'm just happy to have it nonetheless. I do have the American versions, which I could just swap the disc out or just play that game. But just to have this on my shelf comes with like a carbon fiber, beautiful box. I love the box on this. It's so nice. I didn't know really what was in it. It's something that I knew that I wanted. So it comes with a Forza 2 game. Really nice, limited collector's edition. Very cool, and it's got the you know it's got the the man nice manual which I already had, and it's got the got the game disc, and then it's got this really nice silver kind of a brushed aluminum look on the box. Very very cool, and I didn't know what the other thing was that came with it. I really I've never seen one up close, and you know it's funny they have these for all of the Forzas. This is the only one I want. Forza 2 is my favorite Forza Motorsport of the Motorsport series. And it comes with this limited collector's edition. It's a little booklet. And I and I didn't know what was in it. Oh, wow, it's a whole booklet. Well, apparently it's like it's table of contents, and it's a, it's like an art book. And it's where it talks to the designers of Forza 2 all about the game, the vision they had for the game. Um It's quite a, extensive about how they developed Forza 2. And remember, Forza 1 was on the original Xbox. So when I first bought my 360, this was one of the first games. I was late getting an Xbox 360, the latter part of 2009. So you better believe this is one of the first games. It has all the car manufacturers, you know, which are, you know, I've had 90. My Nissan Maxima makes my 90th car. I'm a huge car enthusiast. In some ways, I'm more, now that I'm older and settled down, I'm more into gaming than I was cars, but actually I was much more into cars than I ever was gaming or anything else. Even though I was into dirt bikes and martial arts and a lot of things, cars have always been my biggest love in life. Uh, you know, I love the movies and I love music and concerts and everything, but I love cars so much. Anything that relates to cars and the different brands, this has beautiful artwork, just be a gorgeous book. I'm absolutely blown. It goes over every car. Here's Acura. It goes through alphabetical order. Aston Martin. I love Aston Martin. If I had the big bucks and could afford like a 360,000 Vantage or something, you better believe I would get one. They've got some beautiful new Aston Martins out today. Audi, Bentley, BMW. And it just shows like one car of each, even though there's multiple cars for some of these categories. It just talks about the cars that are in the game. And it goes over all of Here's the Buick Grand National, you know, fantastic. That's the only car that ever beat my 72 Corvette. I raced one of these and he smoked me good. Just a lighter car, faster. My car was a little heavier than that. And uh, I was shocked at how fast those things were. It's got the C6 Corvette, which I did a painting of one of these. Beautiful. Just nice. So you have all these cars in here. Here's a Dodge Charger at the time, which was brand new then. You know, all these wonderful cars. All oh, these turkeys are going crazy. They're jumping up on the window. Sorry guys, scared the shit out of me. My heart rate like drop. Here's a Murcielago, one of my favorite cars. I played this on uh, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2, one of my favorite cars in that game. Koenigsegg, I mean great cars. Lancia, Maserati, I love Maserati. I'm not a big McLaren person. I, I do like the F1 car, but I've never the newer cars are very unreliable. The 720S, all those cars, they look gorgeous. Really tough. I mean, the windshields and all of them break. Things break on them all the time, and people have them sitting down for two months waiting for parts. It's just very unreliable supercars. Everyone wants one, but they don't do the math on them. My 350Z, of course, now there's a 370. I just sat in a new Nismo one. It was real... <laughs> 
Better believe I was tempted to buy it, but I said, no, no more cars. I, I can't do it. I've been looking at those in the 50th anniversary Challengers and the 50th anniversary 370Zs, and I, I be, would be a liar if I said I wasn't tempted to go down and buy one and pay cash for one or whatever, but I, I can't. No, no more. I've got to, I'm trying to really draw the line, trying to learn from history and not make those mistakes of spending money again. Anyway, beautiful. I just, I'm getting carried away here. Just tons of all the cars. And it goes through uh, options and things that you can do with the cars. I mean, just it really in-depth. Just a tremendous amount of gorgeous artwork. All the specs on the cars, how, how much they weighed, how fast you could rev them up. It's got all the different racetracks. Laguna Seca, which is just a couple hours from here, a great track. I've been there. Beautiful, beautiful track. One of my favorite tracks. And it just so happens in California. And then we have Sonoma Raceway, which is just less than an hour away, which is also nice. Road Atlanta, Silverstone. And then it has all of the, you know, these, um, the icons for love. It's just, it's a great book anyway. Just wonderful stuff in here. All the things about the, the various assists and how to drive and how to deal with your driving lines and oversteer and understeer and all that kind of stuff. A wonderful book. Fred, thank you very, very much for this. This is the only uh, special edition of a Forza game that I want, even though it'd be kind of nice to have all of them. This one, I like Forza 4 is, is, my, is my second favorite, even though it's much more polished for the 360 and has, and I've got all the cars and all the season passes and DLC cars for that, but this means so much to me, Fred. Thank you. This is a wonderful gift. What a wonderful home warm, uh, housewarming gift to receive right before we, we leave this house. So I really appreciate you sending this, bud. It really means the world to me. I'm so happy. This just I'm excited holding this game. I love this box. I love this game. This is the most colorful of all of the Forza Motorsports games. The new ones, you feel like you're in a hospital. They're so sterile. The menus are just kind of cold and clinical looking, as polished as they look. But I, anyway, I like this. So those are my gifts. Um... <clears throat> Thank you very much, guys, for those gifts. It means so much to me. Um, I'll show you what I picked up. So we went to the, the first GameStop down here that had the closing, kind of going out of business sale, and I just got a, I just got a couple games and fifty percent off. These were ten dollars each. I got them for five bucks each. The original Quake. Now I want to find Quake Two as well, but I'm very happy just to have even the first one. I've never played the first one, but I have played Quake Two. And then I got the 1080 snowboarding game and I believe I have the 1080 Avalanche game for the for the also for the on the um, the Nintendo GameCube so I definitely wanted this I love snowboarding in fact I need to get the cool borders one two and three for the PlayStation one I love those very much I had a customer that was so happy with the work, painting work I did he knew I was a gamer back in the days and the week it came out he got me cool borders too as a gift which I was just elated um, so anyway, I got a couple wonderful to add to my collections, and now I got a whole stack. These are just the games I've just got recently for the N64. You know, plus I got the two Duke Nukem games and the um, Shadows of the Empire. So I'm getting a nice little collection of N64 games. Like I said I'll get probably the Road Rash 64. I think there might be another Cruising USA. I'm not sure I want to get that. Quake 2 certainly I want to get that as well. Um, I found a couple other games. I've got. Um, I've been meaning to get the XCOM games. I have XCOM, the Bureau to Classified, one of my favorite games for the 360. I've used it in a couple of my Hidden Gems videos or must-buy games. But I got the Commander edition of XCOM Enemy Within. There's another XCOM 2 or another game for the um, Xbox 360 uh, that I also want to get. But at least I've got this one, so I'm slowly getting them. And then I found, I'm trying to get all of these games in the series I have the Command and Conquer Red Alert. Now I've got Command and Conquer Tiberium Wars. And I believe, that if I'm correct, you can let me know in the comments, I think there's one other Xbox 360 Command and Conquer. These are one of my favorite games. I think I might have even played this on the PC in like the early, mid-2004 or five. I'm not sure. But I love these Command and Conquer games. And my friend Jeremy was going to hook me up eventually. He got me the, the Red Alert one, but I'm going to eventually get the third one. Or I don't know if there's three or four. I'm not sure. So I got a couple of Xbox 360 games, one of my favorite consoles, absolutely love the 360. 
And then I found this is a game that I didn't know. I knew they had it for the uh, PS4, but I didn't know they had this special edition of it. And it's called the XCOM 2 Collection. And it has it comes with two discs, which I didn't know. I was, I got this, again, 50% off or whatever. So cheap. It comes with two discs. You get XCOM 2, and then there's like a DLC expansion disc as well. And it has all of this, these different expansion packs you can see on the bottom here. So you've got the Resistance Warrior Pack, Anarchy Children, Anarchy's Children, Shen's Last Gift, and Alien Hunters. You know, and you get all the gun packs and all the other stuff. So this is like the whole deal here. A wonderful, so it comes with, yeah, it says, um, includes XCOM 2 base game, War of the Chosen expansion, and then four DLC packs. Probably weapons and outfits or aliens or something. I love the XCOM games. I love, you know, RTS real-time strategy games like Wasteland and Wasteland 2 Director's Cut. I just got that Mutant Year Zero, which is another game in the series. So I'm very, very happy. I just installed this last night on my system here, thank God. I got that, and then I had, this is a game I had digitally, but I wanted to get the special expansion. If you buy this physical disc here, you get the base vanilla game plus all the expansions, and that's the Spin Tires Mud Runners American Wilds. This is, I saw Carrick at ACG one night, he did like a 20 to 40 minute gameplay video, kind of like a walk, one of those walking the walk deals where you just like, oh, I'm sit down and I play this new Mud Runners game. And I was mesmerized. It looks so good. And since then, I've watched like another dozen reviews and other people's gameplay videos as well. And I, this is a game that I've played a little bit of. Just I tried it out initially just to see how the mechanics are. You go out basically in this big open world and you take these really cool old Chevy trucks and old lumber trucks and stuff and, and you, you just drive them. And some of them are on paved roads and then there's like, you know, um, rock slides and then all you go off road and then go through bogs and and down really steep, rocky, you know, hillsides, and and you basically got to try to four wheel, and you go to you have to go to like these logging camps and pick up a truck and trailer, and then drive it to you know from like from point A to point B, and it's very challenging. You have a winch on it, so you can use a winch to grab a tree and pull yourself out of a bog or a tough situation. Really sketchy, like cliffside roads where you're right on the edge. I mean, very cool game. It's a very slow paced game. But this is a very fun game. I would highly recommend this. Now I've got the full game and the physical copy to boots, which is nice. So very happy to have this. So that's my pickups. Just a few things. It's nice to have those things. And again, I got that Lonely Mountain Downhill thing I got just the other night. Um, but that's pretty much it. There's another game I'm going to get, a little um, arcade kind of a shmups game I saw on there. I'll get another money card and get that. So I can't remember what the name of it was, but it looks pretty good. So anyway, getting to the good news. This is uh, a lot to say. I'll try to get to it as quickly as I can. Um, I talked about, you know, we're going to get a new house. My wife's already there in Boise, Idaho, and all that. Well, we had a big open house Saturday, and another even longer, like a couple more hours longer one on Sunday, and it went very well. Unfortunately, we had a lot of heavy rain Saturday, which kind of slowed a lot of the people looking on the streets. When it's pouring out, a lot of people don't want to drive around and get out of their car. But even still... There were like 14 different, uh, you know, people, sets of families that came just Saturday alone, even with bad weather and a shorter open house day. And it went, well, we have, and then we had another one Sunday. I, we have multiple offers. There are people right now that are outbidding each other. The bid is, we're already going up like close to 10000 over what we even asked for the house as people are trying to outbid each other for it. So we're going to wait and take the best bid. Um, some of them, you have to wait, make sure their, their credit's okay. You have to accept the one that looks the, the strongest. One guy's you know, putting like 50000 down on it. He's got a really good credit. We'll probably go with him. I mean, they, the, like I said, the bid is getting up there. Very, very surprised and very happy. And every agent that's come to this house, Dean, your house for a small you know, home, for, you know, it's a good home for like a starter family, someone just, a family just having a family, having kids or for a retired couple, it's a good home. It's a very small home. It's not really big enough to have children for us, you know. It's just the tiny little rooms. The rooms are like 10 by 11 feet, very tiny. But for us, it's fine. You know, I'm, I live in my little living room here. It's not very big, but I love it. And we've gone to great lengths to fix the place up. Everything is absolutely perfected. I repainted the entire house, the cabinets. Everything is, the paint lines are super crisp. I mean, it's, it looks like it's got a high-end paint job in it. 
and every agent that's come through Dean, your house is beautiful. Of all of the smaller single family homes that we show, your show's about the best. You have, and even though people that didn't want to buy it or the agents would say, and there's many people that are not, and it's not quite big enough for them, they would still go out of their way to say your home just shows beautifully. You really, you won't have any problem selling your home. And I didn't know. I'd been out of this real estate thing for so long. I didn't know if it would sell fast or take months. I didn't know. Well, it's already it's as good as sold. So today, we're, my uh, agent's putting together the offers we're going to pick out probably by tomorrow the best one. And that's, that's, that's wrapped up. Guess what? On top of that, my wife went out all day Saturday at open houses and then found a couple houses she liked. And she took her phone. And I didn't know you could do this. Apparently, you can, you can do like a video call where you can talk to someone. I, I don't know shit about technology, but you can talk to them. And she's like walking through the homes. Oh, check. Here's the hallway. Here's the laundry room. Here's the garage. Oh, look at the master bedroom and bath, you know. And I'm sitting there, and I'm kind of seeing it through her perspective. And it's amazing. I didn't know you could do that. I'm, it was very cool. So it sucks that I can't be there looking. I like to shop. I'm, I'm As a visual person, I like to be there, get a feel for the place and the feel for the neighborhood. And unfortunately, I have to rely on my wife to handle this. But she has sent a myriad of photos and videos, video calls and conferences for over two weeks now. And finally, it came down to like two homes. And, and the homes here, they, they have an open house. They sell in one day, just like this one did. They, they go fast. I mean, sometimes you'll go to bid on a house. It just went on the market. It's already sold. And my friend, my friend Vinny and I talked to him. He said, Dean, there were so many people from California coming and buying, even in Twin Falls. It took us a whole year to buy our house because we kept getting outbid by other people coming in with cash offers and you know better credit or more money down or whatever. And it's tough. So... My, my mother-in-law is a, is a realtor. She works for one of the most prestigious real estate companies in Orange County where they sell million, multi-million dollar homes, gorgeous high-end homes in Newport Coast, right on the beach. I mean, really high-end homes. They sell like average one of the middle Orange County homes as well. So they referred through their referral system. We got a top-notch agent, very aggressive, very professional this guy's on it. Well, sometimes before it goes on the, ML, the M, MLS listings, these agents have inside information. They know custom home builders and other real estate people, and they know of homes that are about to go on sale before the whole, everyone sees them. That's the way to buy a house. You know, this is all new for me. I'm just learning all this shit. So <clears throat> he had a, a custom home builder. It's in the part of Boise that I wanted to live too. Really nice part of Boise. Uh, it's kind of out in the country a little ways. It's not as popular, but up by the main part of Meridian. Um, it's, it's, it's in the city of Meridian, which is, is part of the, 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 it's like a suburb area of the Boise area. Really nice, you know, homes. Um, we wanted to live in Eagle. Eagle is like really expensive, like, you know, million dollar homes. You can't afford to live there. So we're living on the opposite end, the south side of Boise, and which is where my wife is living now. This is like just two miles from where she's at right now. And when I was there in June, I said, this is the part of Boise I want to live in, is right here where we're staying at this house. I love this house. I love these neighborhoods. You drive in these little two-lane roads out in the country, and there's farms and horses and white picket fences. And then you'll see a couple of old homes from the 60s and 70s. And you'll see a nice development they just built. And then more farmland. It's just kind of nice. You're kind of off the beaten track. and not in the, We're just tired of living in the cities. I've lived in L.A. for years. I've lived in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, Orlando, Florida, so many big cities. And it's just nice. To, I like. To, I want to go back to my roots. I grew up in Maine, kind of out in the country, and that's kind of how I want to die. I want to basically live what's left of my years. In fact, initially I wanted to move to Wyoming or Montana, but there's not a lot of jobs. They're a great place to retire. You can definitely get a good home there cheap, but there's just not a lot of jobs, not a lot of stuff to do there. You're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so what I like about Boise is you're still in the same area, still by the, it's the Grand Teton Mountains. You've got all these huge national parks, and you're out in the open plains and the beautiful mountains and ski resorts and all that. But you have the, kind of a good-sized city, just big enough to where you can get a good job and make money. They have really nice malls and two Costco's there and everything. The gas prices, God, are so cheap. They're like a dollar, something less a gallon. I just can't believe it. My wife just filled her car up yesterday at Costco, and the Price is like a dollar twenty-five less a gallon. It's just so good, and the real estate prices there are less than half of what they are here. Even though they're kind of getting expensive and they're going up twelve percent a year, 
know, what's funny is a year ago, we could have got this house for probably 80,000 less. That's, they're going up like 80,000 a year in price. So another couple years, I mean, we probably couldn't afford one. So we barely get, my wife got approved for a pretty good amount of money. The house that, that she found, there were, we found two homes that weren't quite listed yet. Well, Sunday, one guy beat us out on one of the homes. The home that my wife wanted, the guy already put a big deposit down on, and we lost out on But the one, the other one is the one that I wanted. And she was kind of indecisive. Well, I know, but I like the bathroom better in this one and this. Well, the other house was in a brand new neighborhood where there's like houses that are framed behind it. It's not even, the neighborhood has got a lot of dirt and dust. I mean, probably it'd be a good year before that part of the development's done, where the house that I want is like a, you know, was built earlier in the year and it's all done now. The whole street and street behind it is done. So it doesn't have all the dust. It's already been landscaped and everything's been done. So um, there'll be less construction dust and all that. These are brand new custom homes, a beautiful custom home builder. Um, it's a small three bedroom, two and a half bath house, but it does have a big three car. They technically say it's a four car garage because you can put two cars end to end in one long unit. And then there's a really wide, big, two-car garage kind of adjacent to it. So the long kind of the double length one is when I'm going to make my game room and my movie collection, all that out. We're going to put my wife's exercise or Bowflex out there. I'm going to get probably a stationary bike. We'll still have our exercise stuff. We'll have a couch, a TV out there. Make like a den. It'll be really nice. And it's all insulated and air-conditioned. That's what's beauty about it. Even the garage is like completely finished. Beautifully done. Nice plaster work, lighting, everything. It's very, very cool. So... I'll show a few pictures here of the house. I, when I have more pictures, and I, when I eventually when I get, can get there, I'll do a nice video tour of it. But at least you can see a few shots here of the exterior and the backyard. And I'll just show just a couple of the main rooms. This is a gorgeous house. We could never, ever in our wildest dreams ever hope to have a house even half this nice here in California. The price for this house in California would be well over a million dollars and just unaffordable. We could never have it. We were very lucky to squeeze into this little 1977 fixer-upper that we're in now, and I worked very hard to fix it up. I spent over five grand just drywalling and insulating and lighting and putting a sink out in my garage, and it took me you know, a year to save that money up just, just to do that. So it's expensive. This, The beauty of this one, it's all done. I'm not thrilled about the exterior color and even some of the interior colors, but hey, you know, it's just paint. I can just like waving a magic wand and make it any color I want and do an even better job, paint job, than what's there as good as they look. So my wife absolutely loves the house. She, we're really excited about it. I immediately sent like Solid Rev and Blaze, my friend Mikey and a few friends of mine, my friend Phil, different ones, a couple of pictures of the house and told them, hey, we just got, we, in fact, we put a deposit down and we were already, we're all approved. So it's in escrow right now. We're very excited. Uh, they're going to hold it for, we have a 60-day uh, sixty day escrow, more than enough time. This house is going to be slam dunked and sold. The house is done, but there still is a punch list. They're fixing a couple things in the house, real minor things. So we're gonna, you know, about to get the home inspector and all that. So I thought I'd share it with you guys. I'm so excited. It's like I still haven't, it hasn't even registered. I can't believe, I'm in a state of shock and can't believe it's gone so well. And I can't even be there. I'm like, it's all remote. So it's like a dream. And I just keep looking at the photos of it on my phone and go, wow, I wish I could just walk there and see it. My wife is so excited. She went out and had celebrated and had a nice dinner by herself, sadly. But I was, we talked to her when she had her dinner, which was nice, you know. And I'm here, I, mean, I got a can of refried beans here opened up. That was my goddamn dinner, you know. And she's having like a steak dinner there. But I don't care. It's, I'm just happy to see her. I got Vinny here with me. I'm as happy as a pig and slop. So been enjoying, I watched it once upon a time in Hollywood. It took me two nights to get through that. It's like over three hours to get through that. Did watch the Rambo um, movie, the, the new Rambo one, the fifth one, which is really, really good. And, um, oh, and then when, I also, when Steve was here, I gave him, because a lot of those movies came with a DVD and a Blu-ray. So I gave Steve, I had some little slip covers, and I gave him all of the, 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 all of the DVDs for the new movies that I've got. So that way he's got him. He's already watched Overlord last night and sent a text back saying he loved it. So I, I'm just I'm shocked. Things are going so well. I've had just an outpouring of support. Rev and everyone I've sent the text to loves the house and pictures. And uh, thanks guys for watching. It's, I'm so excited. I, I'm going to have more to share eventually once I get there. There's so much going on. So much to do. Um, 
I'm glad that this is over with here. I, I, showing your house is stressful. I have to kind of step outside while they show the house. It's weird having strangers in your house. And I still have things, you know, in some of the cabinets and in closets. It's just kind of odd. And then Vinny's, I'm worried about him getting out of his room and all that. It's kind of, you know, stressful. But it went very, very well. I'm very happy. Much better than I thought. I never thought we'd get a house as fast. I, I thought it could take a month or so. I didn't know, you know, because a lot of the homes my wife liked and would talk to real estate agents, they should call, it's already sold. The guy says, yeah, it's already pending. They're like, already? You just went on the market yesterday. Yeah, they sell like that, in one day they sell. So if it, we hadn't had this realtor that had the inside information, because the next day it was gonna go on, and it was also, all the homes in that development are gonna go up $15,000 in price as of today, but because my wife had looked at it a week ago, and then over the weekend, we're gonna get it for $15,000 less, which is really nice. So we locked in at a really good price, in, because of the coronavirus, we've got an insanely low, like a 3.29 interest rate, really cheap. I, I just shocked at how cheap the interest rate is. They've never seen them this cheap, so it, it, it's going to be amazing. We're going to pay the Challenger off. We, we're just not sure if we'll pay my wife's car off yet. Uh, she might have even paid it off by now. She's supposed to let me know, but she was going to go down to the bank yesterday, and she's got a couple, she already had a cashier's check for the deposit last night and drove it over to the home builder gave it to him to put down in the house so now it's our house they're taking the for sale sign down and all that very exciting so i can already see i'm already salivating over that new game room it's going to be great i'll have some neon out there and you know if i'm lucky i'll find a nice analog tv i'm going to build i think my own shelf and build a custom shelving system where they're fairly close together and that way i can neatly put all my dvds and video games and cartridges and stuff and kind of be able to have them on display to some, be able to access them better. We've been living in this tiny house. I mean, all my collections are in boxes. So sometimes I don't even know about things. I've forgotten about them because they're out of sight, out of mind. So it'd be really nice finally to have all my things laid out. I don't have the biggest game collection. It's just the stuff I like. Just enough things that will keep me busy. And I've got more than enough to play. I'll be lucky to play half of what I've got, to be honest, if I can retire and start focusing on it. Right now, I'm going to, I haven't gamed all weekend because of all the stress of dealing with this open house, but I'm looking forward to gaming tonight. I'm going to get back to my Terminator Resistance. I'm enjoying it so much. The game is outstanding. If you take the time to watch, I mean, 90% of the game reviews, not counting IGN, the GameSpot, just shit on it, but everyone, I mean, that GG man lives, who's very critical, he raved about it, loves it. That worth Mac, worth a buy is one of the most negative SOBs. It's one of his favorite games. Even the, the jaded Jim Sterling himself raved about it, said it was one of his favorite games of the year. He was pleasantly surprised. Everyone that knows, knows how good that Terminator so, or, um, Resistance game is. Outstanding. The game is radically going up in price. Uh, maybe out in Buttfuck, Egypt, you can find a copy of it. But here, it's getting there. You can't find them. Every GameStop, we went to four GameStops the other night. You could not find, they're, they're gone. Every Walmart, Target, Best Buy, it does not exist. They are gone. My friend Jeremy in Ohio, I mean, he's out, kind of out in the outskirts of town. He has a lot of hidden places. He could not find one. He found, called every GameStop. One guy canceled his pre-order, and it's the only way he was even able to get one. So you can always buy it, you know, a digital version of it for 60 bucks. But it's nice to have the physical copy. It's very limited print run. They're not going to be reprinting any more of them. So if you see it out in the wild, you better get it because it's going to be gone eventually. I guarantee you that game will be rare and very expensive. It's going to go up, and I see it being for hundreds of dollars. I would pay $150 like that for that game. It's that good. It's one of my favorite games in the last year or so I've played. Outstanding. Really happy with it and highly recommend it. In fact, I'll have some more gameplay video very soon to show you. So I'll go every so often. I'll upload a little bit of you know 20 or 30 minutes of gameplay just so you can see it because I'm really having a lot of fun with it. Thank you guys for watching and listening to me ramble on. And I'm just, I'm exhausted. I've been up half the night. I'm so excited. I, I still, none of this has hit me yet. I'm just in a state of shock. So again, thank you for support. Your very kind words. It's been a very tough year. It's almost like this last few weeks has turned around with the outpouring of love and support from my uh, viewers and friends to just things that are just going, turning around. I mean, a couple months ago, I didn't think I was going to get any settlement. I didn't. I was nervous about all of this and even the move, everything. And it's like things have like gone the other way. It's like I've suffered for a year, and now it's like overcompensating with everything is falling into place flawlessly. It's just like a glove. It fits beautifully. So 
You know, God's really looked out for us, and um, my wife, I'm very proud of her. You know, when I met her, she barely was making it. She was two months behind on her rent. She blew her motor up in her little Honda 8700 Accord. She couldn't afford the $2,300. I met her, sold, you know, one of my cars, my convertible Chrysler that I had, and used the money to get her Honda out of there. Later, I sold the vet, paid off all the rent, and prepaid the lease for like six months in advance, got her into a much nicer apartment. We moved in together and got married. And the rest is history. She was a little mousy bookkeeper making 15 bucks an hour. And I had the, back then I was the, the breadwinner and making the big bucks and had the Corvette and a matching black Chevy truck. I mean, it was, you know, living, kind of living the, the Southern California dream. And today, now she's surpassed me. So it's amazing how she's taking care of me now, where in those early years, I took care of her and her daughter. Her husband just left her high and dry with her daughter. Didn't give a rat's ass, you know. These guys are such assholes. And it, it made me feel good. I can't have children, kids of my own. So, you know, I overnight had a daughter, and I'm proud that she calls me dad today. I did my best to try to raise her right and to give her the life that I didn't have as a kid. I gave her all the things I never had as a child. And I'm just so happy. I can't wait to see her this weekend and at her wedding. I'm so proud of her. We're spending thousands on this wedding. I'm, I'm buying her a nicer TV than mine. She's getting a new Q-series Samsung 4K, the top of the line TV, bigger and nicer than mine as I'm buying them for the wedding gift. Plus I'm paying for the photographer, which is a fortune, and then a lot of other thousands of this for this wedding. So I, to me, it's all about giving. You know, I've had, had it so good. I'm giving back to my family and friends, and it just feels good. And I'm going to take care of these, my 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 brother-in-law Paul's boys, you know, probably sooner rather than later. The way it looks, I, I hope not. I hope for the kids' sake. I don't want. They've already lost one parent. I'd rather see the mother live and have raise the kids. She loves the boys so much, and she's already has a, a, a will and testament drawn up. She went to get an attorney, and she wants us to take care of the kids. And uh, we, we're, we feel very privileged. It's like it's the right thing to do. I can't let the state take the kids and split them up and. I, I can't do it. We, we have to, it's our, our duty in life to take care of them. And so I'm going to commit the route. i got to get in shape. I'm going to have to get in good health because I'm going to have to be a dad all over again. And I'm kind of old for this, but I'm going to rise to the occasion. We're going to raise those kids and do our best and we're going to have a nice family. It'll be nice, you know, taking the kids to play soccer and basketball. I'm going to buy them go-karts and mini bikes. I'm excited. I can't wait, actually. And I love boys. I've always wanted a boy of my own. I couldn't have kids, so... It's a treat. And then to play video games with them on top of that, it's going to be great. I'm excited. These poor kids have never even never played video games. I feel so bad. I'm so excited. So I, I spoil them. We were down there and bought them a bunch of gifts. And every time we go down south, we pop in and visit on them. Again, I hope that we don't have to, you know, do it too soon. But we're prepared. We're, we're getting ready. And just in case, you know, we're going to have everything in place to do the right thing by these kids. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about our new future. Excited about getting out of California and the hellhole it's turned into. Nice area with genuinely nice, good people in a beautiful area of fresh air and mountains and lakes and rivers. Lots of outdoor stuff to do. I'm going to be limited with what I can do, but I'll find stuff to do. I can swim and walk and stuff like that and take mountain bikes as long as I'm on like a smooth trail. It's not too rough. It'll be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. So anyway, again, before I go crazy, another 30 minutes of rambling. Thank you for watching, guys, and enjoy your games.